Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. Thank you very much for joining me for another Sunday evening afternoon live. It is a beautiful day outside today and I probably should have gone for a hike or a bike ride, but just recently it seems like I've had a lot of views on a really old video that we did and it was Quilt As You Go Log Cabin. And I love that there were all the views on it. But back in the day when we did that video, we didn't have these little guys, these little earbuds, which act as a microphone. And so the sound was kind of in and out. And then the second thing about that video was that I did not actually show you how to connect the blocks. In a later video, I did like kind of tell you, okay, this is how you do it. But you know, when it's not all connected to one video, sometimes it's hard to find the next video. So with this one, we are going to do quilt as you go, log cabin. I'm using a jelly roll and we are going to connect the blocks with the easy sashing technique. So a couple of things on the back of it, when you do the quilt as you go, you're going to have different squares. Now, most of the time when I do a quilt as you go, I will say pick a fabric that's busy so you can't see the seams. Nope, I'm letting you see them. And what I decided, because this was really just such a, a fun fabric, I have no idea where I got this jelly roll from. I'm just like, all right, I got to do this. Came home from church, grabbed the stuff, started making it. And I'm like, all right, it's sort of a whimsical fabric. So on the back of it, I used some of my novelty um, fat quarters. So we've got like little trailers and cows and kitty cats and fruit baskets so just a variety of things. So there's the idea of using, instead of a big piece of fabric for your backing, you know, cutting all the squares, consider using that stash of fat quarters that I know that you have, right? We all have way too many fat quarters in our stash. The quilt as you go, I don't have a book for. But what I do have is the easy sashing quilt as you go book. So in this book, I show you how to make a reversible quilt. So you get to do this quilt, and at the same time, you're making another colorway on the back, but here you see the sashings, and this is the sashings that I'm gonna do. So if you're wanting written instructions for the easy sashings I'm gonna do, this is the book, and I put the link below for the E pattern or for the printed pattern. And on the back of this one, it was kind of cute. I did this video, and right before I got it printed, a gal, what was her name? I think it was Betty. Yep. Betty Webb from Texas wrote me and she said she used my easy sashings technique to do kind of a crazy quilt. So she made the blocks and I don't know if you can see them, but they're just kind of all sorts of different blocks. And then on the back, she did the idea of using fat quarters. I thought it was adorable. I mean, I think I put the video out and before I even got it printed, she had actually finished a quilt using the technique. So that kind of gives you an idea how easy this is. So let's put this over here. Let's get this out of the way. And we are ready to start. All right. So we're going to start with, right down here, I have my fat quarter right here. My batting, I want to find the center of the batting. So I'm going to reach and make a crease in the middle of the batting. So just take and fold and fold. I just want there to be a gentle crease so that I know where to start with my center square. I want to hold the layers together. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the 505 adhesive spray. Just gonna go just about like that. That'll hold it great. I cut these squares 15 inches with my planning that the block would finish somewhere around 13 to 14 inches. And it actually ends up finishing 13 inches. So for me, that was great. So now I've got this, you can just, let me see if I can, that crisscross is quite right about there. I can see it, but maybe you can't. I'm going to take my chimney, and I'm just going to place my chimney right there in the middle. Now, I've got a selection of darks and lights. One thing I was thinking about was how big would I be able to make this? I don't honestly know how many strips are in this jelly roll, so I'm not really sure. But one thing to consider, if you at some point use one of the strips for the dark outside. Now I only have this much left. 
then I can probably get this to be the second strip in. So if I used it for the outside, I can also use it for this. So if you kind of play with that idea, all right, if I use this one on the inside, then I could use it on the outside or something like that. So these are the three that I'm going to play with for my darks. These are the three that I'm going to play with. Oops, you can't see that for my light. All right. So I'm going to start right here. I've got, oh, heck, I could actually, I'm going to hold him for a little bit. I'm going to take my strip. Now, the thing about a jelly roll is not all of them, but some of them are going to kind of come with a pinked edge, which means you're not going to be able to use that for a perfect seam allowance. Well, that's okay, because for this technique, I want a fatter than normal seam allowance anyhow. I'm just going to fold it to cut off my salvage edge, all right? I haven't even said hi to anybody. When I turn around here, I'll start saying hi to everybody, okay? I'm going to place it right next to the, on the, on the log square. I'm going to scooch this out of the way so Athena can come on in. Come on in, Athena. Ooh, let me grab all of these so that I can keep working kind of over here. All right, so Dagmar's here. Dagmar's all the way from Germany. Haven't heard from you in a while. Um, creative Grandma. Hello, and Scotty is here. So we've got a lot of people watching. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. All right, so I have moved my needle over. On this particular machine, I have moved it to a 2.8, which is going to be a maybe slightly fat quarter inch seam allowance. Because we have the pinking and because this is kind of quilt as you go, I find it helpful to have a slightly bigger seam allowance. I'm now going to sew on the edge. When I get to the end, right there is where I can see the chimney square. I'm going to cut my thread. All right. If you don't have a thread cutter, that means you're going to pull it out and cut it like normal. That was not a very straight seam but we'll make it work. Now I'm gonna fold this over. Now I know that in the original video, I told you to draw a line, which is totally still cool. And if that works for you, this time I'm finding that just folding over is working just fine for me. Hello, Long Beach. Hi, Della. I didn't get a chance to say to you, hi to you in the last video because you said, like your comment came up super early and so I didn't get a chance. So I'm glad you wrote back. How you doing and how's Long Beach? Now I'm taking my second log and I'm just gonna place it Again, right on the edge. Keeping in mind with the log cabin, you're going to go around clockwise. So I start with one little guy, then I'm gonna do the same color right here. Cut my thread. And fold this back, lining it up with the edge of it. So it should be fairly square. If you want to error one way or the other, maybe error a little bit bigger, just because then you'll be safe in terms, you know, you'll have enough fabric on the seam. Okay. And now I'm going to fold it back. Now, if you wanted to, for this part right here, this folding, you could use your, um, like your little clover mini iron. Heavens to Betsy, you could actually take it to your iron if you wanted to. I'm just doing it finger pressing. Seems to work great. All right, I'm going to go to my next. Now, this is, oh, that's my light. I need my dark. All right, so this is going to be one of my darks. I've already cut off the end of it, and this fabric cracks me up. Those are Norwals. I, I don't think they're a mythical creature. I think they're actually a real creature. Um, never seen one. Thought it would be really funny to see one, but I remember it's only been a few years ago that I'd actually even heard they existed, and I thought, is that a real creature? Is that kind of like Barbara Manatee? She's not really real, but she is. All right, keeping this lined up. Trying to sew a little bit straighter now. There, cutting off. Folding this back. So this time I went a little bit far, but that's okay. As I fold back, a few of those stitches will come out, and then I'll just cut it off. Now you do not need to do any backing up, any locking, because the stitches will be crossed over. But if you wanted it to be extra strong, would it hurt if you actually did a, you know, a lock stitch? Nope, wouldn't hurt at all if that's what you want to do. I just don't find it necessary and I'm okay with that. Right. Be sure when you start that you do get your top thread to come under the foot and I kind of hold on to it as I start. That way my bobbin thread does not make like a little rat's tail underneath. 
Um, you'll know what I mean. If your machine does that, you know that it annoys you very, very much. Um, and on this machine, if I just hold that tail as I start, it doesn't happen. We've got Pennsylvania, we've got Kansas, we've got Texas, we got Germany. Did I see any other internationals? Oh, Canada. Canada's international. It's a whole nother country. I spent a couple of days in Port Huron this past week teaching at a convention there, and my room was right next to the St. Clair River, and I got to see these freighters going, and across the river I could see Canada. All right, going back to the ironing board. Athena's walking backwards. All right. At this point, I want to press. Now, this is what is going to make it. Oh, what happened? Did they, you just show them the ceiling? No, no, oh, okay, good. <laughs> All right. So I want to press those. And then because I'm going to use a friction pen, I want to make sure this gets cool. I'm now going to square it up. And I'm squaring it up just by drawing a line. I found with this quilt, with the seam allowance that I am using, I am able to get a six inch square out of this. So I cut that two and a half inches. And of course the jelly rolls are cut two and a half inches. Now I think in reality, this should be six and a half inches, but my seam allowance is big. So it's only about six and a quarter. So I am going to draw a square to be my next lining up line at six inches. So I'm using a friction pen here. This is one of the newer ones that has a, it's easier to write on fabric with the new ones. They've got some felt tip ones and then this one that's not a ballpoint. I don't know what I'd call it. It is a hard tip, but it actually writes very nice, a little bit easier to write on than the ballpoint versions. Now I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to make it six inches. So I'm going to line up the black line that I just drew on the six inch of my ruler. And for this, you really do need to use a square ruler. I am using a 10 and a half inch square. In truth, you could use for the whole project, if you wanted to use a 15 inch, because our blocks will end up 14, you could use that or a variety of other squares. All right, so now I have drawn a six inch square all the way around and I'm ready to start my next log. And my next log will be another light log. So I'm gonna do this particular color. And need my scissors. Oh, I already have the selvage, it's already cut off. So I'm gonna lay that here and go around again. So come on over here to the machine with me. Making sure that my top thread is underneath. I am using a cotton thread. I've got a 50 weight in the top and a 50 weight in the bottom, and that seems to be working out very nicely, which is, you know, standard piecing kind of a stuff. Um, I think I just put my scissors over there. All right. Hey, somebody from Michigan. Hi, Jackie Williams. From Taylor, which I think Taylor is, well, at least it's on the east side of the state, but like where Port Huron was. It was actually a very, very nice convention with beautiful weather. So looking out on the St. Clair River was pretty awesome. Makes me really, and, and I, because of COVID, we've not been able to really travel to Canada easily, but they have lifted all the restrictions now. So now Athena is thinking it's time. She's, she's 30 some years old and hasn't been to Canada yet. I think I want to go to <laughs> yeah, for her birthday. Well, that's not a bad idea. Um, she actually has been to other countries, though, but she was kind of too small that she doesn't really remember it. <laughs> she was just a little one. All right, going to the end, cutting this off. We're just going to do three rounds, so it really won't take too long. I actually made that whole four piece that I showed you and one extra block in just, I got home about 1230, so what is that? Maybe four, four and a half hours, got everything all cut for the next one, too. Then one more here, uh, another dark one. So let's use this guy, he's super cute. There's something about this jelly roll, I'm not sure, but I think it, I, I don't know how long I've had it. I don't know what it's called. Oh, it. it looks very Alaska-y. Is that a word? Alas Alaska-ish, let's call it Alaska-ish. Because it's got, well, Norwals. I, I don't know, do you think Norwals are in Alaska? 
All right. Special kudos to anybody that can tell me if a Norwal is a real creature and if they've ever seen one. Hi, Georgia. Yeah, you're late, girl. Where you been? You were watching the Packers. I just know it. Um, we're, we're done with football. I think we're going to swear off football because we're Lions fans and I just can't take the heartbreak anymore. It's just more than I, I can handle. Bill. I'm numb to the pain now. Numb to the pain. I'm not. I'm just, I'm just... After they won one game, sorry to talk too much about football for those of you who don't care about football, but we won a game and I got all, oh my gosh, we're, we're going to not be a losing team this year. And so last week I actually watched the game and it was just literally heartbreaking. I, I cannot take them losing like this after they did the hard knocks thing and blah 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 and then today of course they lost by a little bit but i did not watch and it still hurts <laughs> all right anybody from alaska oh formerly from michigan anybody from alaska can tell me if they've got norwals i've not gotten any responses to that so i'm thinking somebody's got to be googling it right now go is a norwal a real creature nancy needs to know all right back to the ironing board georgia, let us know. so georgia let us know we count on you for these things. Right now she's scurrying. Oh my gosh, I got to hurry up. They're waiting for me. All right, so let's press this one out. I really do love this fabric. I, I wish that I knew how long I've had it and where I got it from. All right, so let's cool it off. I, I mean, like most quilters nowadays, jelly rolls and fat, and, you know, fat quarters and things like that are just kind of they're fun because you can get a nice little collection. So this is one of the many. The whale is real. It's a whale with a protruding tooth. All right. It kind of looks like a, a water um, unicorn. That's what it looks like to me. So it is a real thing. So would it be up in Alaska? All right. So this time I've got my second row on and I can do a centering here at nine and a half inches. So the first time I drew my square at six inches, this time I'm gonna do it at nine and a half inches. Now this would really depend on you and your machine. If you were doing a smaller seam allowance, uh oh, what just did the camera move? Oh, okay. If, if you were doing user error, if you were doing a smaller seam allowance, you might be able to get a 10 inch out of this because technically in terms of the math, that should work. Well, it didn't work for me, so I'm going with what I've got. Okay, Great. Um, Georgia says Arctic waters around Canada. So technically, I would say Alaska, um, Russia, and Greenland. All right. Way up there. Thank you, Georgia. We knew we could count on you. <laughs> Georgia is also our, uh, she's one of the designer members. And when we're doing our EQ classes, she's, she's pretty techie. If anyone's having trouble with their Zoom, we always count on Georgia to figure it out. All right. So now I have drawn on here a nine and a half inch square. Going to turn it this way. So now I can start with my next light. Let's see. Nope, I did that one. Oh, here's the one. Nope, I did that one. Oh, I was going to do these, these fish, which... Let's call them salmon because salmon hang out in those kind of waters too, right? My mom and dad, when they went to Alaska, they actually fished for salmon. All right, this is my last round. Let's go back to the machine. Starting here again. And go. No need to really pin at this point. I do have my walking foot engaged because I have a fat sewing machine. If you are doing this with your machine that might not have a, if you don't have a fap, or I mean, some of the new ones actually do have some other types of um, walking feet. But if you don't, then I would recommend that you do put on your walking foot. You're going to want to have that so that all the layers are feeding through as smoothly and evenly as possible. When it gets to the next step after this, I'll show you what I mean by maybe it won't always be as smooth as you want. All right, so there's my first log of light. Now I'm coming to my second log, second and last log of light. All right, thread underneath and go. Keeping it right there on the drawn edge. 
Don't pull the fabric. You want the fabric just to lay straight. If you pull on it, you might actually cause some like puckering to go on. Hi, Texas. Well, thank you very much, cute lady. I'm not flirting with her. That's her given yeah, name. I'm sure it's her given name. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining our page. We appre I appreciate it. Athena appreciates it. And Teresa and Gina and Bill, they appreciate it too. All right, so here's my last one of my light log. Now I'm going to go to the last of my dark logs. I already did that one. Let's go with this one. I thought this was pretty cute. Okay, so I'm going to fold this down. What did I do with my scissors? There they are. Sorry. Fold that down, cut a straight edge because I don't want my selvage to be in the quilt. Throw the selvage on, throw that piece on the floor behind me somewhere. Got to be sure I get that thread to be underneath as I start. There. Lining the edge of the strip up with the edge that I've drawn. Oops, I went off a little bit. All right, last strip coming up. Yeah, log cabins are fun because they're generally pretty easy. Um, and the idea of quilt as you go just makes the process done. You know, um, you're and with the technique that I'm going to show you today, you're going to see how easy it is. You can make a king size quilt on a pretty small machine because you're only going to be adding one row at a time. So it makes it very nice to be able to finish your own quilts once in a while. Now, we all love a long armor. Generally speaking, I'm going to quilt most of my quilts that are queen size or smaller now that I have my power quilter. used to be that I wouldn't do any quilt my own anything bigger than a twin, but now that I've got the power quilter, I will go a little bit bigger. And the truth is, if it's bigger than that, it's just more work than I want to put my body through. So that's when I call my friend Karen, and Karen quilts them for me. So love a long armor, but it sure is nice when you can do some of your own quilting. Have a quilt done, even king size, and it would be all yours with the quilting. All right, now going back to the ironing surface. That was my toe. Oh, I'm sorry. I told you to put shoes on. <laughs> I told tell. her and she I did. told her. All right, now we're going to press this out. Now at this point, we have a block that is approximately 13 inches. We are going to square it up, but this would be what I would recommend, is that before you square it up, you add more quilting. Now, in truth, this is a cotton batting. I think this is a warm and natural. And technically, if you follow the directions, it says that you can leave two inches unquilted. I'm never happy with that. When it's a cotton batting, I do not think that two inches should be left unquilted. I am much more a one inch left unquilted kind of girl. So my next step for this is to actually do quilting all the way around this block right in the middle so that it will be a one inch quilted surface. So coming back here now, now I am going to change my machine back to the center. And I'm going to make my stitch length really, really small to start with. So I like to do a locking stitch of a 0.5, which is going to be a very, very small stitch. I like that better than a back and forth. And then I'm going to do just, I don't know, a few of them, one, two, three, four, five. All right. Now I need to reach over, sorry, Athena, and go up to a 3.0. I think the 3.0 I liked a lot. And right through the middle. Now, if you wanted to, you could draw these lines so that you knew that you were exactly in the middle. If you're looking here, I'm not exactly in the middle. I am a little bit off and I'm going, yeah, that's all right with me. Me and the Norwals are going to be okay with that. Now, as you get going, what's going to happen, even with the walking foot, because I don't have any basting spray on the top layer, 
my top layer starts moving right here, you can kind of see that it's going to cause a little pucker. So when I get a distance away, I am just using one of these super long pins that I don't normally use for very many things. And I'm kind of holding the fabric underneath so that I don't get that pucker at the end. So I can kind of hold it here. And then definitely when you get a couple of inches away, work nice and slow and just take and push that fabric underneath. Now, you might find this happens even when you're doing a regular quilt. You're doing the quilting on it. I'll, I always put basting spray on the top and the bottom. Um, but when you come to a crossed um, line of stitching, then oftentimes you will get that. You will get the kind of pucker. Um, for what is overrated? I'm good with log cabins. It's one of my favorites. Lots. Of, okay, that's a language that I can't speak. I'm, I'm not sure what she's saying. Does, um, anybody want to do that? No, we'll do the translator at later. Although we did learn today in church that Spain means bunnies. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that it? Or rabbits? No, lots of lots of, lots of rabbits. Yeah, lots, no, of bunnies. Bunnies. <laughs> lots of bunnies. Lots of bunnies. TMI. We don't know why, but the pastor just found that out when he was talking about what we were talking about. It was like one of those things that I thought, all right, I'm never going to forget that. Spain means bunnies. And that looks, does that look Spanish to you? Yes. All right, maybe it looks Spanish. Okay, do a couple more around and then we'll be moving on. So hanging in there with me, okay? Yeah, we got 102 people watching. Hello, all 102 of you. Coming to this edge. Look at, because it's a longer strip, there's even more. So I'm going to be sure that I tuck this under. Now I could use my uh, awl for this, but I really like how this pin is able to get under the foot and then keep it from walking forward. Oops, but my pedal is walking forward. Come here, pedal. And turning, uh, just a couple more to go. I wish that knew what that meant. I hope That's it's a nice thing. Oh, all right. So patchwork. So we know she's talking about quilting anyway. Where's my friend Jennifer and her kids when I need them? I can I can only count to oh, ten in Spanish. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't forget the thumbs up. Thank you, Georgia. I tell you, we're gonna have to start putting her on our teeny tiny payroll. <laughs> Our teeny tiny payroll. All right, so I've done the quilting all the way around. Let's go back to the ironing board. Oh, Norwals are real. I love that. Okay, so we'll go to Canada. We'll, we'll go. To, we'll check them out. I don't know that we were going to go that far north. Where we? I was thinking we'd just cross the Ambassador Bridge and go to Toronto. Maybe we'll go to Port Huron and cross the bridge okay. that way, then drive down to Toronto and then come back on the Ambassador Bridge. There we go. All right. So nice and flat. He's looking pretty good. Here's my quilting just going right around it. So now when I look at the back of it, all the quilting is approximately one inch intervals. I will, I'm not going to do it right now just because it's kind of tedious, but these are when I do the thread cutting on the machine, I'm left with a tail that's, I don't know, maybe an inch, inch and a half long. So I will go back and I'll take those out. So here's the backing. Is that the cutest little fabric? Oh, yeah. Little kitty cats everywhere. All right. Now we are going to move this pressing mat off and we're going to get a cutting mat. All right. Uh, uh, Georgia um, said I interpreted the, the language. Yeah. And says, um, creative quilting. You should appreciate your videos. Yay. Yeah. All right, that's awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love Google Translate. All right. Okay, so now I'm using my 15-inch ruler, and I'm going to square this block down to 13 inches. So when you're doing this, you want to be sure that you're, first of all, 13 inches. Okay, I want to be sure that I have it all the way around. Up, up here, I would be losing a little bit, so let's scooch that down a smidge. And then I also want to, and maybe you can see it here, or this dark line, you try to want to, you want to try to make it so that the lines are running horizontally and vertically so that, you know, you're not kitty wampus, although wouldn't that be an awesome block? All right, there's another video to come. 
quilt as you go log cabins cut on the kitty wampus. Now I'm going to square it up, right side, top side. Oops, missed that little corner. Still miss that little corner there. All right, pick up the ruler, spin the block. Now I'm going to tuck it right into 13 inches here and here, there. There. Now I have my block all squared up and he is ready now to be assembled into a row of two. So this is the blocks that I finished before. Here is another one that I'd already finished previous. And I'm going to do this log cabin in the barn raising design. Um, if you Google that, you'll be able to see what it is. But the idea is that it starts with the lights, well, light or dark. I did the light in the center that makes it look kind of on point. And then the dark will go around that. So here I need to assemble it with the darks together. And then this will be like a panel of darks. So I'd like to be able to get at least one row around so you could see what it's going to look like. Right now, do I want it there? Or do I want it there? No, I don't want those two darks so close together. Do I want it here? I like that one. Do I want that one? I think I'm going to flip it one more time because these two are the same. So I'm going to flip it one more time. So I like this, that these two, these are the darks, but they, these are not right next to each other. All right. So let's put this away again. And we're going to work on putting these two blocks together. This is the easy sashing technique that I was talking to you about. So you're going to start with two strips of fabric. Now, in this case, I've done them the exact same fabric. I'm going to have the same on the top and the bottom. But depending on what you have, you could choose to do different colors on the top and the bottom. I have cut them into two inch strips. The piece that goes on top is a solid two inch piece, and I have cut it exactly 13 inches. All right, no pressing on this one, it is going to be a flat piece. The piece that's going to go on the back, I've taken that two inch strip, I folded it in half so that I could then fold a half inch seam right there. So I want to do that before I start piecing this on to the quilt. Now I'm going to piece both of those strips onto one of the blocks. And I got to tell you, I found something that I really liked for this. Now, if you've been watching the show for long, you know that I love my clover silk pins because they're a very fine pin and I love the length of them. But for doing this, they were a little too fine. And so um, Taylor Seville had actually sent me some of these pins. They call them their magic pins. Um, they're really nice to hold on to. For many things, I think the, the shaft for me is a little bit small, but I know people that absolutely love these pins. They come in different colors, they're heat resistant. So I was like, hey, I wonder if those pins would work for this. And they do, they work really nicely. So they're just the right length, but they're a thicker pin than the clover pin. So it did not bend the pin. And I am going to do not just a little bit of pinning here. I'm going to do quite a few pins. So let's count. This is a 13 inch wide. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to go between each one of these also. Well, and it says you can press over them. Yeah, they do say they're heat resistant. So they're, there must be a silicone or something because they're not glass. They kind of, they feel like a plastic, but if they're heat resistant, that means they must be silicone-ish. All right. So I put in there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pins, approximately one and a half inches apart. Now we're going to go to the machine. At the machine, I have set my machine up with its normal stitch length of a 2.5, and my seam allowance is one half of an inch. 
all right? To help me with that, I put a piece of painter's tape measured from the needle to the position of the edge of the painter's tape, and that is one half of an inch. And this information is all in that book, um, all pictures actually explaining it quite nicely, if I say so myself. Now, I should be going a little bit slower over the pins. Sometimes I forget that. I want to make sure that my bottom is staying where I want it. The bottom strip, not my bottom bottom. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I left. Yeah, Tina started it. All right, going to the end of it, cutting off my thread, going back to the ironing surface. Well, thank you. All right, coming back here, taking the pins out. And they didn't bend. Um, very thick enough pin. They, they are thicker than my normal clover ones. So I like that. Oops. I need to remove the cutting surface and put my ironing surface back up. There. All right. So here I've sewn them together. On the front of the quilt, I have the two-inch strip. On the back of the quilt, I have the two-inch strip that has that piece folded. Now I'm going to just the front one. I'm going to flip that up and press it. You can here you can see that my quilting line wasn't very straight. Oh well, life happens. Then I'm going to take this is my next block, right? I'm going to take that block, flip it over, and now pin the two inch strip that's on the good side to the good side of the next block. You know what I heard just this week? What did you hear this week? Things can be excellent without being perfect. Think, you know what I just heard this week along those same lines at, at my Weight Watchers meeting, which I thought was pretty darn cool. Um, we're not looking for perfect, we're looking for perfection, for, for progression. Oh, okay. We're looking for progress. We're not look. we know we can't be perfect, right? Quit trying. Okay, seriously, you know I never tried. Um, I just try to do the very best I can um, and then progress, always trying to go forward with the things that I'm learning. Okay, put lots and lots of pins again. Now we're going back to the sewing machine. We're going to sew again. Yeah, I go over pins. You know, some people are not real comfortable with that and that's fine. If you're not comfortable going over them, I recommend you don't do that. I don't want anybody having an anxiety attack about going over pins. Um, I just know that occasionally, yes, I may hit one. Uh, and, you know, I need to get a tune-up pretty soon anyway. So, if you know, if that affects my timing, I'll just get a tune-up. But I do like going over pins. It's the only way I know of to get the precision I want. All right, cutting that thread. All right, we have 130 people watching, Athena. All right, don't mess up. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. All right. Going to remove these pins. Excellence without, perfection. Excellence without perfection. Love it. All right. So now this is the top of the quilt, and this is the back. This is where we get to put the blocks together in a super easy technique. It is done using some of the heat press batting. So this is a fusible interfacing for all intents and purposes. Um, Marty Michelle has a nice one. Heat press batting has a nice one. I even think Bozel has them. And it is for making, putting your battings together. So when you have your batting scraps, you can take it and attach it with this fusible interfacing. Works great. But you know what else it works great for? Is keeping these blocks together and flat. So here is my two seams, my half inch seam allowance, my half inch seam allowance. That means my sashing is one inch and look at the seam allowances, but right together. But they're a little flipsy flopsy. And my fear is that over time of washing that flipsy flopsy will get all bunchy and stuff in there. I want it to stay as flat for as long as possible. So this is the batting, heat press batting. Gonna go bumpy side down and press it. And this is a one inch heat press batting. In the original, the easy um, sashings one, I actually took a one and a half inch wide because I could, didn't use this one and I cut it in half so it was three quarters of an inch wide. Worked great. So now look at that. That's gonna hold that down, right? Now I'm gonna use my 
Oh, I'm sorry, you got that? See how it's holding it down? Now I'm going to use my Roxanne's glue. How many times do I turn to my Roxanne's glue? You know, I was teaching in um, Port Huron, and the gals were like, "What? what's that tape going around it? I'm like, well, okay, it's not really tape. It's Hugo's Amazing Tape, which is that magnet. It's the static clean kind of a tape. I have it. There it is. So it's that clear tape. I wrap it around lots and lots of things. I wrap it around my Roxanne's bottle, not because it has a leak, but so that it can store my pin. What is that pin for? That pin is because I know I'm not going to keep this upright at all times and I'm not going to rinse it out before I use it. And so I know it's going to get clogged. So no matter where I'm at, I can always use my pin under some warm water to oh, there's two keep it. The, the leak and the pin? The, there is no leak. Oh, there is no leak. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. No leak, but it does store my little pin. All right, because I know me and I know it's going to get clogged. Now, if I were to take off the cap and rinse it out before I put it away, or if I stored it straight up on a shelf all the time, it wouldn't happen. But is that me? Nope, that's not me. Although they do have a great cap, but it's still not going to be enough to let it not get dry. So putting my Roxanne's glue on there, now I'm taking the folded edge and I'm bringing it so that it's covering right to that stitching line. Okay, oops, this one got a little bit small there. Okay. And because I don't want to sit here all day, and neither do you because it's almost dinner time, I'm going to press that dry. I think Gina's on because somebody made a comment from On Point. Oh, Gina must be on. Or Teresa. Or Teresa. Could be either one of them. Yeah. All right, so going back here. Yeah, Athena rocks. Well, I mean, I don't disagree with you. Right. Okay, watch your toes. Yeah, I know. My okay, yeah. all right, and go and roll it in. Okay, this is the backing. This is the side that had that piece that I folded down and glued. From this side, I am going to do the stitching down of this because I've got that seam. If I did this part from the front side, although it just occurred to me I have a light color, I'm not sure how that's going to look on the front. We'll see here in a second. If I tried to do this from the front side, I might not catch that little edge. And honest to Pete, I want to catch the little edge. In this particular case, I do not want to have to do any hand stitching. So I am stitching that on the ledge right there on the fold. Okay, I'm going to turn here a little bit and then turn one more time. And I don't know if you've noticed, but with my icon, this is a 13-inch block. Oops, sorry, there's my hand. Yeah. Back it up. Look at that. 13 inch block and it's still super duper flat. All right. But if you don't have a you know big huge machine like this, that's okay. You can roll that baby up. Now this time going on the other side, this is gonna secure this sashing. This is honestly the easiest quilt as you go technique. I know I did the block by block for those of you that might be interested. Um, that is a really cool idea when you're doing blocks. All right, backing it up. But for these super simple things, the sashing, easy sashing, there you go. The blocks are together. So now I would take this one. Oops, I got to turn it, sorry. And I would take my existing one. This is how it's going to go. I would cut a sashing that is 26 inches because I've got a 13 inch and a 13 inch. That equals exactly 26 inches. And I would do the same thing. So then around all of the blocks, you would get the sashing. Done. There you go. Let's see, how long did that take? Well, I said it'd take about 45 minutes. Oops, come up, come up here. Oh my. Are we, <laughs> our camera's tipping wrong. We've got a new gimbal and we're just not really yeah. totally 100% positive how to work it. So there you go. Pretty simple, log cabin. Quilt as you go, I use jelly rolls and I use the easy sashing technique. The easy sashing book, if you go to the links below, I actually put in there the links for the paper book or the um, e pattern, whichever one may help you out, um, or watch the video 199 times. We're okay with that too. That's a pretty good way to do it. Um, I'm hoping that you can hear me because that was the biggest complaint with the old one. And I have showed you how to put the blocks together now. So doing the borders, if you wanted to do the borders, if you wanted to add a border to this, then I would go to the block by block series I did from Beth Donaldson's book. I actually do a whole series on that through the Quilted Tiles 
um, quilt. So take a look at that if you want to do the borders on this one. Maybe if I get this one done, I could do a border one, but that obviously can't happen today because I'm fast, just not that fast. All right. Any questions? I'm going to turn around real quick. See you there. All right. Okay. It is Gina. And that was that was Florida kissing me, Florida. I hope that you are nice and safe. I hear that Ian has now passed on through. So everything's good. My brother wasn't down there at the time. My sister is, my nieces and nephews, but I think everybody's good. All right. That's it. That's all I got to say. Um, thumbs up. Remember, um, like the video, share the video with your other quilty friends. I really appreciate when you do that. Um, if you have any comments, the more comments, the better. Have a great night.